Mahomes back, throws, it is incomplete, yes. picked off, picked off by the Lions. Brian Branch with it left side. He's gone, baby. He's going to the house. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Deflected yes. in the air, Branch ran under it, and he took it all the way back. It is week eight in the NFL season, and it's a bounce back week needed for the Detroit Lions. I'm Tim Twentyman. We have PJ Clark. This is the Twentyman The Huddle podcast, and it's the key matchup segment. But as always, PJ, we're going to start with some news and notes. I think health obviously is is looking better for Detroit. Um, David Montgomery, no practice on Thursday. Probably more of an after buy situation, I think, with him. A couple guys dealing with some nicks and bruises. Um, Malcolm Rodriguez didn't practice Thursday. Benito Jones didn't practice on Thursday. We'll kind of see, you know, what their status is leading in. But a majority of the starters back. Jerry Jacobs was out on the field. That's obviously good news after he missed last week. So health wise, I don't think that's going to be as big of a factor for Detroit as it might be for the for the Raiders. Yeah. And and you're getting Jerry, obviously, you know, a a late scratch last week against Baltimore. And and you saw that Baltimore is able to throw the ball pretty efficiently, especially early in the game. And, you know, this is a, a team now in the Raiders that has two good outside receivers that you're going to have to, to pay attention to and look at. And Jerry, obviously, coming back is going to be pretty helpful. But especially after a game like what happened in Baltimore, I, I think being at, you know, 90, 95% health is is the easiest way to get back on the right side of things right now. No, 100%. Obviously, a bounce back week for Detroit. Look, last week was a butt whooping. It is what it is. It happens. It happens. Um, I went back and looked. Of the 14 teams that made the playoffs last year, eight of them suffered a loss of it one loss of at least 20 points and five of those teams had at least one loss of 26. Look so at that. It, it, the sky is not it happens. falling. The San Francisco showed on Monday night. It's hard to win on the road yep. in this league, right? I mean, it just, it is what it is, but I think you have to learn from it and good teams do that. They bounce back. They don't stack losses together. Yep. And so I think this week will tell a lot about the Detroit Lions. It's one of those things where, yeah, it can, it can happen once, but it certainly can't become a habit and you can't, have it happen again now at home. I mean, it's, we've talked about this Monday night game, the helmet, if you're watching on YouTube, finally going to be going to be worn. Everybody's excited, fired up. It's going to be the loudest Ford Field has ever been. It, you can't come out flat. Got to hit the ground running. And, and everything that Dan Campbell has preached, you know, in his two press conferences so far this week, I, I think they're going to be ready to go. Last time Detroit Lions lost a football game week two in overtime against Seattle. Next four. Double digit pretty, wins. Pretty good. So they bounce back. They've been in this spot before. So uh, we'll see if they can do it again on Monday night. All right, key matchups. You know the drill. We go through five of them real quick here. To me, the first one, let's start with the most intriguing one, right? It's trick or treat uh, the day before Halloween on on Monday. And I think Lions, Lions fans and football fans in general get a treat when they get yeah. to see Penne Sewell. Detroit Lions right tackle versus Max Crosby, their terrific two-time uh, Pro Bowl defensive end. And Max leads the league with 35 hurries. I think he there's nothing he can't do. This might there, be key matchup of the year. There's no this weakness really in his game. He's got six and a half sacks. He's second league in tackle for losses. He's got a motor that never quits. I mean, he is their guy. And then you look at Panay Sewell. All he's done is not allow a sack since week 10 of last year. Good. No quarterback's even been hit. Uh, with with him on 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 duty this year, three hurries all year playing right and left tackle. I mean, this is one of the best tackles in the league against one of the edge ru- one of the best edge rushers in the league, and I think uh, football fans are going to benefit from from watching that one all night. Yeah, I'm I'm excited that the the national audience gets this yeah. one. So like we we talked a couple of weeks ago about Worfs and Hutchinson, that was you know a little bit more of a, a regional game, a 4:25 that game on Fox, but a, a regional game. This is ESPN Monday Night Football. Everybody knows where 98 is on the field, and everybody is going to be waiting to see him across from 58 and silver. And I'm I'm really excited. And you said everything with Crosby leading leading in pressures, six and a half sacks. The thing to me is he's played more snaps than any edge rusher over the last three years. Guy never comes off the field. 97 percent of snaps. And with how hard he rushes he, and how he never quits. I mean. Guy He's grinds. a heck of an athlete. Guy absolutely grinds out there. And you're going up against, like you said, Penesul, who who has not let Jared Goff even get a, a sniff of any defender near him this year. 
It's going to be really fun to watch. Maybe a little bit of a benefit for Panay is that he's had the luxury of going against Aiden Hutchinson all Definitely. training camp. I think I look at Aiden Hutchinson, I look at Max Crosby, the number one and number two guys in the league in terms of quarterback pressures. But I see very similar players, yep. right? Guys with a good repertoire of pass moves, a motor that never quits, you know, uh, can stand up, can play different positions. Um, and I think maybe that benefits Panay a little bit that every single day, you know, in training camp, OTAs and in, in the offseason, he's had to grind and go against that you're guy. You're used to a, a similar caliber uh, across from you and, and you're used to, to seeing maybe some similar moves. But I mean, Max Crosby, this guy... This guy's a stud. It's, it's going to be a fun match. This is next level, and it's not only going to be Panay. He plays across the line. Everybody's got to be ready, but I, I think that's the one that everybody's going to be keyed in on. All right, another one who I think is one of the best at his position is Devontae Adams. They're Absolutely. terrific wide receiver. I mean, one of the best in the league at getting off the line of scrimmage free releases. Um, it's just hard to get your hands on on that guy at the line of scrimmage. And I, th- I think, you know, Jerry's probably going to see him a little bit too. He'll play in the slot. They move him around. But I think it's Cam Sutton's probably going to see a majority of load. At least if you're Detroit, that's probably the matchup you want. Um, look, you look at, at last week and you look at the pass defense for Lions, and I think everybody – in that secondary will stand up and admit that that wasn't their best performance. I mean, there were guys running free. Now, look, pass coverage, at least good pass coverage in this league is a marriage of the rush and cover. And those guys up front didn't do their job. The guys in the back end didn't do their job. No, when you have 9.4 seconds. When you have both of them, it's it's a recipe for disaster. And that's what we saw last week. It was a disaster. And so it'll be interesting to see how they bounce back a little bit. I mean, we're talking about Cam in a performance where he allowed three catches for 58 yards, and and that's maybe one of his worst performances of the year. That's how good and how steady he's been for Detroit secondary. So I think that's a terrific matchup. Can he get his hands on uh, Devontae a little bit at the line of scrimmage? Can he reroute him a little bit? And can that pressure up front um, get to Jimmy Garoppolo or Aiden O'Connell, whoever it is, we're, we're, we'll see, um, and, and and affect that and not allow you know those guys to sit sit back there like they did, like Lamar did last week, and just pick this this defensive back yeah, field it, part. Once you you have that much time, and neither any of the three possible Raider quarterbacks are not mobile guys. So at least you're, you're kind of ruling that out and you're, you know, you're getting a pocket passer with Hoyer, O'Connell, Garoppolo, whoever it's going to be. And Garoppolo's dealing with a back injury. Yeah, so, so that he could might be, even be, be less more limited mobile than, yes. than, than you're even thinking he's not to begin with. So you, you're looking at that and you made a really good point. Three for 58. I felt like last week was the first time where I like even noticed Cam Sutton was out there and, and made the conscious note that like, oh, Cam let up a catch. And it was only three for 58, yeah. which is not – It's listen, it's not great. You don't want to give up 20 yards a catch, but it could have been a lot worse. Yeah. And, and he, he held it down. The, the interesting thing to me here, obviously Lions fans are very familiar with Devontae Adams, has been a thorn in the Lions side for a long time. But on the, on the Sutton matchup – He's six one. Cam Sutton's five eleven. Devontae Adams is two fifteen. Cam Sutton's one eighty five. You're getting two inches and thirty pounds. A little bit bigger of a body out there. Whereas Zay Flowers, Odell, smaller type guys last week. How is Cam going to hold up against a little bit bigger body? Outside? I think Cam plays bigger than what he is. Yeah. Especially we've seen that when he plays the run game. Look, when they need a big play in the pass game, Adams is their guy. Forty six catches on the year, five hundred twenty eight yards, three touchdowns. He's their guy. He's the one Jimmy trusts the most. If they need a play, um, it's going to go to him, especially on third down. And so that'll be an important matchup yep. in this one. All right, let's flip to the Detroit side of the football. Jameer Gibbs, who I thought you know played a terrific uh, a game last week, definitely bright spot. Yeah, one of the lone bright. Spots. Yeah. Um, you know, both rushing and receiving. You throw a rookie 10 times, he catches it at nine. Now, look, I know those aren't deep shots down the field, but that's consistency. And when you look at how the Raiders might defend them, I think they've got a few options, but maybe their best one is going to be Ryan, linebacker Robert Spilloon, who, look, Western Michigan Bronco, shout out to the Broncos. Um, but look, a guy who I think is one of the better cover linebackers in the league. I mean, you just look at some of the numbers here. I mean, opposing passers have a 53.2 rating. That's the second lowest yeah. in the league among linebackers when they throw his way. He's terrific. Um, he can cover ground. 
down. And so if they decide that that's the way they want to match up with Jameer Gibbs, who I expect to continue to be a big part of the passing game, um, David Montgomery probably isn't going to play in this one. So we're, we'll see a similar role, I think, to what we saw Jameer last week. And uh, I think that's going to be an interesting matchup because not only it, when you talk about the nine catches for Jameer being a big part of the passing game, but some of those are an extension of the run game yeah. too, to get him out in space, Just get him out swing, wide. Get and the how, ball out. How much can he create that separation from Robert to maybe create some of those big plays? Yeah, I, I think you're looking at, you know, finally got 20 touches last week and, and that's what we've been waiting on all year to see, you know, what can he do with that large of a workload? Mm-hmm. And I think you were really impressed against a really good defense. And yeah, some of it was, you know, Took him a little while, I thought, to, especially on the ground. You saw more chunk plays in the second half, just kind of getting going a little bit for the first time this year. But really impressed from from what he was able to do in, in Baltimore. But you're going against a linebacker, two interceptions against Green Bay, two pass defended outside of that on the year. This is a guy that has a an ability to break up passes and, and can run sideline to sideline. Another three down player that doesn't come off the field. That's really his skill set. Yeah, I mean he has a terrific skill set in the pass game. Yeah. One of the better ones. And and when you're going up against such a you know receiving weapon, I think it's going to be really interesting. Can maybe do we see Jameer in the slot to try to you know. Do you think you have a better matchup against a nickel than you do even a coverage linebacker with a guy as, as good as this? Yeah, 100. percent It'll be interesting to see how they use him, but it's good to see Jameer kind of settling into his role now. He, you know, he's had an opportunity to be the number one guy, and I thought he handled that role well. And I think that's a, a good sign for him moving forward. That that if needed to, he can handle that role and certainly be a one B to David's one A. And I think you're you're getting. The vibes, certainly, at least, are better at home for the Lions offense. Yeah. Josh Reynolds is a much different player at Fort Field in the Dome than he is outside, statistically. So you're getting, you know, Josh Reynolds scores his touchdowns at home. You know you have that threat that maybe wasn't there or wasn't open as much last week outside in the, in the colder weather and against a, a, a better defense, a better secondary at that. So you're looking, you know, Jameer... Does Jameer have to have nine catches this week? No, yeah. but we know he's capable, and we saw what he could do with it last week. Let's see if he can get into some open space, yeah. see that speed develop. Really, Maybe get some really big break plays. One. It was good to see that 21-yard touchdown, get that kind of uh, off Check his back a little bit it's there. It's been and, half a season. And I'll get yeah. rolling. You know, Speaking of running backs, it's been really kind of weird, I think, with – the Raiders looking at kind of where they rank in terms of, I think they're what, the 27th yeah, in rushing, 30th in offense. And here's a guy in Josh Jacobs who was the leading rusher in the league yeah. last year. Um, obviously, you know, had some contract disputes and some holdout stuff. And I don't know if that's affected them at all. But I think another big matchup in this one is is Detroit's front led by Lee McNeil, a guy in the center who they, you know, they really rely on to be their run stuffer inside versus Josh Jacobs, who they've, He's really struggled. 347 yards on the season. He's only averaging 2.9 yards a carry carry and two touchdowns. I mean, they're the worst rushing offense in the league. 68.6, actually, it is. Um, And so it'll be interesting because I know that's what they're going to want to do, at least on the road is come in and at least have some sense of a running game. They're not going to want to put. Jimmy Garoppolo or Ain O'Connell back no. there and just have him throw 40 to 50 times. They've got to try to establish Josh Jacobs. Detroit has been terrific stopping the run. Um, you know, little hiccup last week with 146 yards, um, you know, allowed uh, by Baltimore the first time this year that that a team has gone over 100 yards against them. But I think that this is a really interesting matchup because uh, – they talked over um, in Las Vegas this week about, you know, thinking that they're close, that, that, you know, a five yard run was almost a 15. If, 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 you know, we had this one little block, this one little, you know, hiccup, the one missed assignment. So they feel like they're really close with it. And, and Josh McDaniels is going to stick with it to try to be balanced. Yeah. And and when you're coming into a hostile environment in a road game like that, you're going to want to control the clock a little bit and just get into a rhythm, especially if it ends up being Jimmy at quarterback. Jimmy, much like Jared, is a play-action quarterback. So you have to at least establish the run a little bit and and get that threat going. And Josh Jacobs has historically been somebody that has been very capable of, of doing that. Led the league in rushing last year, has not exactly hit this year, but 
you have that threat in the back of your it mind. It only takes one. Like, you you know it only what takes this one. guy can do and is, what he's capable of, and I'm sure Lee McNeil, the rest of that front, Bugs, all all of the guys in the interior are, are going to be very familiar with, with what Josh Jacobs is capable That's of. That's job number one. Stop him. Make them a throwing team. Limit the play action a little bit. Look. Jimmy Garoppolo's got eight interceptions on the season. He's been known to to dish him out a little bit. So I think that's the recipe I, for success. I feel like we've said it a lot this year when, you know, you're forcing Desmond Ritter and Jordan Love and Bryce Young to drop back in the in the mid forties and you you know, whatever, you're throwing thirty eight times, you're getting seven sacks or whatever it was against Green Bay, like those are the games I think the Lions are really going to play well in. When you're forcing the opposing quarterback to to drop back 48 times, I feel pretty decent about the odds if that's just what's going to be in the box. Score. All right, let's take a little bit closer look at that quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo versus Kirby Joseph. And, and I, I put this matchup together because he's due. He is due. He's you look at last due. year and, and the plays that he was able to make, the ball hawking, the, the, the takeaways, we just – we haven't seen it yet yeah. so far. We talked to Brian Duke, the defensive backs coach, this week. He said, look, if you look at some of the numbers, teams have been attacking them a little bit more on the outside than they have the middle. And so maybe when that you know has you got a center fielder out there. Maybe that has a little bit uh something to do with it. But like I mentioned before, like Jimmy Garoppolo's got seven um touchdowns on this season. He's got eight interceptions. The Raiders lead the NFL in giveaways with 15. I think if there's ever an opportunity for a guy like Kirby to come up with a big play, get off the schneid a little bit on the interceptions this year, and and this defense come up with a couple really big takeaways and, and key plays that we've seen in some of their wins earlier in the year, I think this is a good opportunity to do it. Yeah, and I think we've seen a lot of – it's not that, you know, Everybody expected after last year Kirby would be be just the ball hawk guy, which I still think he is. But we've seen a lot of improvement from Kirby. I thought he was great last week, kind of cleaning up on the back end. He's been better in the run, run game, game this year 100%. Than, than he was last year. So it's not that Kirby's season has not gone the way I think anybody wanted it to. He's improving as a player, but you want to see your big play guy make some big plays. Yeah. And I think, you know, halfway through here, heading into the bye – I, I think this is a really good time to kind of see it, whether it's Jimmy who has a has not protected the ball well this year or it's a young quarterback like Aiden O'Connell. These are guys that are susceptible to mistakes, and I think you might be able to kind of bait, bait them into one over the middle here. This is a big game at home, that environment, the noise. You get that crowd it's going on, on the defensive side of the ball and make a few of those mistakes. I think it, it's going to be really tough sledding uh, for the Raiders. So those are the key matchups. We will return with Vic uh, Tafer from The Athletic. He's going to break down everything Las Vegas Raiders. Welcome back to the 20 Mill Huddle podcast presented by Microsoft, and I am very happy to welcome Vin, Vic Tafer. He does a great job covering everything Raiders for the Athletic. Vic, thanks for taking the time. I appreciate you joining me. No problem, man. Big game coming up. All right, it is. It's Monday night, right? It's it's two teams that are coming off, you know, difficult losses uh, last week. Um, obviously, Lions are trying to right the ship at home ahead of their bye. Big game for the Raiders to turn things around after a loss to Chicago last week. Well, let's start with the injury front for you guys. Obviously, a big one. Jimmy Garoppolo um, looks like he returned to practice on Thursday. What's his status for, for Monday, Vic? Yeah, we'll be out there for the uh, practice window, I think, in an hour or so. But, yeah, he's going to be out there, so I think he'll be fine. I mean, I think unless he's a setback, he'll be the guy on Monday, which uh, is good news. He clearly is the, their best quarterback. He struggled this year. He has eight interceptions. I think some of the fans have already turned on, on the guy. But, uh, yeah, he's definitely their best guy. So I think any chance they have to win, uh, he'd have to play. You know, the eight interceptions, obviously a little bit surprising with with just, you know, how he's been able to to, to limit that in years past. How he, he's he's, you know, played pretty good game management type of type of style. But the one thing that jumps out to me that when, when I look at the Raiders and I, I kind of like scratch my head a little bit is Josh Jacobs with three hundred and forty some yards, two touchdowns, averaging two point nine yards per carry. I mean, this is the leading rusher in the NFL last year. And to look at that Raiders offense and see them last. Last and rushing, that's a little surprising. What's been the biggest issue there, Vic? 
Well, I think the teams coming in now, opposing teams, they watched the film last year, obviously, and they saw it, he, you know, how good he was. So their approach this year has been stacked the box. We're going to put eight, nine guys line of scrimmage. If we want to try and beat us deep, go ahead. Uh, and the Raiders haven't been able to do that. There have been no plays down the field. So uh, even if how good you are, I mean, Josh Jacobs is a great running back, but a you know, nine-man box, that's pretty tough. He's getting hit uh, behind line of scrimmage. Oh, line's not been great. They were uh, – they kind of overachieved last year, I thought, and they kind of kept the same bunch intact this year, that one new guy. But kind of disappointing for them. They've not been as good as they were last year, and he's definitely feeling the brunt of that. So uh, it's a combination of things. But like I'm sure the Lions will come out, and I'd imagine they'll stack the box as well. And that's worked every every week so far. So I'm not sure why you do anything else against, against the Raiders. You know, you look at the Raiders defensively, one of the best teams in the league in terms of their pass defense. Obviously, Max Crosby is is one of the one of the better edge guys in the league. I think – Football fans are going to be treated to to a great matchup this week, Vic. Penne Sewell versus Max Crosby. Are you as excited as I am to kind of watch that one? Really, two of the elite guys at their position going at it for 60 minutes. It should be a fun one. Yeah, definitely going to be the best matchup on the field, I think. Max is just, uh, he's hard to describe. He's just uh, nonstop energy. He moves around up and down the line of scrimmage. He, uh, he can't really can't be stopped. He just doesn't. He has a huge wingspan. He uh, chases down the ball. Just a, a guy who's also a good leader. He kind of brings his guys up with him. So there's not much else besides him on his defense, which makes his accomplishments even more impressive to me. Is there's not a lot else on this front. So I think he's definitely the guy. So any chance you have to win, kind of you know starts with him. He has to have a big game, or else the defense uh, is in trouble. Vic, does he play a lot over the right tackle? When I watched a little bit of film on him this year, I saw the majority of that. Will he slide over, see Taylor Decker on the left? Do they line him up inside? Do they really just try to move him all around and, and get the best matchup possible? Or, or is it going to be him and Panay mostly? I think it'll be mostly him and Panay. That's where he's most comfortable. But definitely, they, they move him around a little bit. He definitely goes to the other side. He'll go inside on some plays. Because obviously, uh, teams definitely target him. He's definitely, the, if you're scouting the Raiders and making a game plan, stopping him is definitely job one. So you got to move him around a little bit. You got to make him hard to find sometimes and try and get different looks. But um, yeah, for the most part, he'll be on the right side. But um, yeah, I mean, he's uh, he, he can make plays wherever he is. Who's a, maybe a player over... Uh, um you know, in, in, in Las Vegas that maybe Lions fans don't know a whole lot about, but but who could ultimately have an impact in, in winning and losing for the Raiders on Monday night? It's a good question. I think offensively, it's probably Jacoby Myers, kind of a guy who's, I don't know, fancy guys are excited about him, but he's kind of been, uh, it's weird they can't score points because he's been really good. He's number two guy. He gets a lot of targets and he makes good catches in the end zone and then tough catches. So he's been better than I think that, you know, they thought. And so, um, I think he's definitely a guy who can be dangerous if the Lions try and focus on Devontae Adams. Uh, Myers can hurt you. And you know, defensively, uh, you know, I would probably say the secondary has been uh, – before last week, they were kind of overachieving. I thought Trayvon Merrig had a good year of safety. He was a high pick a couple of years ago. Didn't play that well, but he's kind of come into it. He's gotten a little smarter, a little more, you know. He's a veteran now, so he knows what to do. And uh, kind of a tough guy against the run pass. So he's been a kind of surprise for me, a guy who's improved in the secondary this year. Have they just done a good job of kind of marrying that that rush in cover? Obviously, when you play good pass defense in the league, it's got to be a little bit of that. We talked about Max, just how much of an impact he has, but is it just they've been doing a good job of, of marriaging that? They've taken advantage of opportunities. Why have we seen them be able to be so um, you know so good this year in, in their pass defense? I think they lead the league only 10 um, plays of 20-plus yards they've given up. They've just they've just really limited teams in the air. What what's What's been the biggest catalyst behind that, you think? Vic? Well, I'd say they do a good job of disguising coverages. I'm also going to say, Raider fans probably don't want to hear this, but they played some really bad quarterbacks. I mean, they, we've played, that, that, uh, we played Russell Wilson. We played Mac Jones. They played uh, Jordan Lowe's been terrible. They played I mean, last last week with uh, Bajan for the Bears. They actually beat them. So not a great list of quarterbacks they played this year. I mean, Josh Allen sh- absolutely shredded them when they played them. So, um, yeah, so I think if Jared Goff was on, on his game, I think you'll see those stats kind of take a dip after after this week. When you look at this matchup, when you look on paper and, and, and maybe in the film study you've done, what do you think is is the biggest key for the Raiders? If they're going to come on the road uh, into a hostile environment and look Ford Field has been really hostile. I know the Raiders you know, are, are used to that, but, but Ford Field's been a little bit different. These Lions fans have been different. What do the Raiders have to do? What's, what's the number one thing that, that they have to do if they're going to come here and get a win Monday night? 
Well, the offense has been terrible, so I think the offense has to be good. I mean, it should be good. There's talent on this offense, so I think you have to see Jimmy G hit Devontae Myers some big plays on the field, maybe get Michael Mayer involved the tight end, but they got to get some big plays down the field to kind of open up the running game a little bit. So only chance they have in my mind is if they get some big plays down the field in the, in the passing game. Well, it should be a fun one. I think there's stars on both sides. It's national television. It should be a great environment. I know you'll enjoy that, Vic. I'll make sure I stop by and say hello. Safe travels to Detroit. All right, but I appreciate it.